Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex. Rare Whiskey Friday. Rare Whiskey yeah, Friday. Yeah, now Rare Whiskey Friday, we're gonna go through multiple bottles giving first impressions. These aren't necessarily large brands. Occasionally they are, more often than not, these are gonna be your smaller craft distilleries without a tremendous amount of distribution. If you should be so lucky as to live in a place where you can get your hands on one of these whiskeys, you're welcome for the review. Thank you to the magnificent bastards that sent the whiskey. This is a gift from Greg Vangsness. Gotta turn it around the right way. Greg Van Ness, you... <sighs> Greg Van Ness, you may give us it. Bastard! So he sent us a koala. Oh, is that a, a bottle opener? Bottle opener, yeah. I guess, yeah, this is show kinda... Them, show them, show the thing. Like, well, you, first, where do you it. hold it? You have to hold it against your pasty yes. white skin. Yes, pasty white skin. Hey, it worked. It's a koala. That really stands out. Yeah, and it's magic. And it flickers, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, a ways back we reviewed Journeyman. I think I remember liking Reverd, Journeyman. Reviewed, reviewed Journeyman. I think I remember liking Journeyman. We liked Journeyman and they had that funny story where they uh, were in a buggy and corsets whip, and like buggy. corsets and buggy whip yeah. factory, right? Meow. Anyway, so after we reviewed that, the distillery emailed us. Oh. And we're like, hey, thanks for the review. Yeah. And you know, we appreciate you guys giving your honest opinions and we want to send you some whiskey. So I said, that's fine, but we're gonna have to awkward pause you and sure. it may be a while. Yeah, yeah. So that was a while ago. Okay. But Greg sent us this whiskey, which is their Featherbone Bourbon. Okay. And I think that's a great name, Featherbone. And this is different than what we reviewed. And different from what we reviewed before. Okay. And it gives us an excuse to try the Rep whiskeys after this. Now, the Rep also sent us a Featherbone. Oh. I'm gonna leave it closed okay. until this one is empty and it'll be our backup. Supply whiskey. That was so close to another benevolent bastard. Area. I know. No, we're gonna do. But we have to do the cricket. How can you benevolent bastard it's the rep? You can't. You cricket trip the. You cricket. You cricket trip, trip the rep. The rip. Silent, yeah. awkward pause. So we'll do the cricket trip in a second with the rep. But this is their bourbon. Yeah. Now this is. There's some cool stories on this. There's nothing. I really like what they're doing. There's nothing weird, outlier, you know, crazy exotic notes on the nose here. My favorite thing about this one is that they named it after a guy who was a staunch prohibitionist. <laughs> I, don't, I just like these people, right. like the Featherbone right. and the corsets and buggies <laughs> and the jokes about the old factory, right. naming things after a prohibitionist. Yeah. I just, these are my people, I feel like. <laughs> it's like, it's like a puppy pissed in the rug and then you rub his nose in it. That's what yeah. it is. <laughs> <laughs> Look what you did. Yeah, right? So this is corn, 70%, 25% Now wheat. I sound like I really mean to puppies. Yeah, you're not, not you're not puppies. puppies. Twenty five percent wheat, so that this is a weeded bourbon, oh. and five percent rye. There's no malt. Okay. According to their mash bill, okay. it's corn, wheat, and rye. Oh, interesting. What? Corn, wheat. Forty five percent. They blend each batch. This is batch nine. So I'm definitely picking up on those corn, traditional sweet. Bourbony, a little bit of cherry. Yeah, there's something else in there. Cherry and honey. On it's those. not perfumey. And then, like, it's not wheat. Is, okay. Unless wheat gets kind of aged for a, you know a pretty decent period of time, more often than not, it's just a soft sweetness, with a little bread, a little bit of a wheat bread character. It's like a sugary wheat bread character. This is twenty five percent. Yeah. I think that may be. It's so close parallel. It so seamlessly complements. The, the flavors I'm typically getting from the corn element, mm -hmm. that I'm thinking it's just marrying with those flavors. It's like, taking, oh, try it. Ah, oh, sh That's really good. It's, uh, it's tamping down the grain musty note of corn. Yeah. And adding this dark molasses. Still cherry. And still cherry, but yeah. almost like pancake molasses on like bready yeah. molasses. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. That's a good bourbon. Yeah, I really like it. It is not typical Kentucky. It's not typical sourced MGP. It's 50%. It's not even typical craft. 50% ABV. High enough to definitely capture the, the characters of those flavors. I'm not sure what the rye is bringing to the table. I think it may be so... Well, 5%. Yeah, light in the mash yeah, bill. Yeah, I'm not getting a ton of spice in this. You definitely, it's it's the corn and the wheat that are... The it's best. wild because in, normally in a high corn, you're getting that dusty bourbon note. Mm-hmm. But I think it's so much wheat is rounding all of those dusty grain notes down. Mm. Yeah, that wheat character really complements it. it. It rides along nicely with the cherry, with the honey. Wow. I think you're getting more of a 
dense molasses than I am. I'm just getting like a thick honey with that cherry. I am, uh, I am a fan. Oh, I dig it. And I'm gonna be a fan of this bottle because Greg sent it to us. Yeah. I feel weird about being this dramatically. This is a damn good bourbon. It is. No, it's super like this, good. if super good. It's just a good bourbon. All right, let's let's pull out the other. Wait, one. look at his handwriting. Who, where am I looking? On the other side. Oh, look at that. No, no, that's the signature. Right here? That's the map. That, wait, wait, is that the signed by the yeah, master distiller? The distiller signed that. <gasps> Damn, Greg. And Look at that handwriting. Oh, that's just all types of. That's all kinds of beautiful. That's professional right there. That's, that's fit for framing. And you know what? The rep sent bottle, they didn't sign it. So we have. Greg got us the signature. Greg came through. Clutch move. From Clutch Greg. move, Greg. Where you at, journeyman? <laughs> You know where they're at? They're right here with a rye. Oh, the rye. From a rep. Int okay, so we didn't really get to see what the rye was all about. Wait, I want to use a different glass, so hold on to the bourbon. Fair enough. But uh, well, I'm going to get some glass while we awkward pause. The next two whiskeys are from the rep. I'll open this. And the rep is, by the way, Sandy Weinling. You feel better? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> so this is their rye. It's called Last Feather Rye. Okay. And uh, once again, their story makes me think, I really love these guys. Yeah, yeah. This used to be called, before you try it, I want to hear if you can hear the, the, the smell the note of defiance in this whiskey. <laughs> okay. This used, their rye used to be called Ravenswood Rye. Okay. Right? Oh, isn't there a wine named Ravenswood? And then the wine people came after you. Is that what happened? Know. Did the wine people come after you? They won't tell who came after the them. The wine people, all, allegedly. I'm all they allegedly. say is, is someone I came after know. us with cease and desist, and we spent so much money with the cease and desist that all we had left was the last feather. <laughs> <laughs> and so they named the rye the last feather rye, and I thought that was hilarious. Right, right. So this is 60% rye, 40% wheat. Once again, rounding off the dominant grain with the wheat. With wheat. That's an interesting. Interesting move. Yes. Because we, whenever it's just all wheat, it gives like this sweet softness to it. Yeah. But I think if you're trying to, you know, do some interesting things with flavors, uh, have another grain be the hero, but you also want to round that off a little bit. You also want to give, you know, put it in a vehicle that's most likely going to deliver a whiskey that is, uh, you know, smooth enough for people that aren't necessarily whiskey nerds. They want to go exploring smooth enough for them to play with it by putting in a little bit of ice, maybe some water. This is batch think, 108, and look, they put the RR as a little... <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, there's the rye... You know what this reminds me of? Spicy. We can't get it out because rare whiskey... From, no. Maybe we can. It reminds me of Monongahela rye. Okay. Like right. the northeastern Pennsylvania rye coming out of like Dad's hat. You think this is, it's not too spicy for a Monongahela? No, and remember, the Monongahela is that really rich rye that's not licorice. Okay. That's the thing about Monongahela. Oh, yeah. the Super herbal, rich and herbal, herbal spicy, but yeah. not licorice. Yeah, yeah. And this is a really beautifully rounded, rich rye, but it's not licorice and, and eucalyptus. There's like three stages to that. Whoa! Boom. 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 Black tea followed by herbs followed by what? What's that third thing? Black tea, sweet black tea, herbs. And then the finish does not last for days. The finish falls off the cliff pretty quick. It's not especially oily. These are bright flavors. Yeah, it just finished. That's what it is. Herbal. The finish is just a slight dry yeah. vanishing. But there's like a momentary sweetness of something. But that's right weird. Before it just dissolves. It really is not this one round flavor. It's this. Bam, bam, bam. Mm -hmm. I, you know what? I, I know it's rare whiskey Friday, but I want to get Dad's hat out. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. That's one. What is the proof on that one? Forty-five. Uh, this one is forty-five. Yeah. Okay, so this is also forty-five. This is the classic Dad's hat rye. Yeah. And I'm wondering how far off base I am with just a classic Pennsylvania rye. Not too far off. This is more malty. Yeah, different mash bill, yeah. and it is more... Dad's hat's definitely more malty. It's almost more minty, too. Smell that and think like actual mint leaves. Oh, like a plant mint leaves. Wow. Dad's hat... You know, it took us a while for us to 
actually be comfortable saying, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of rides we like. We're, we're, we're ride guys when it comes to several rides out there. But her Dad's Hat, though. Oh. Back before, I, as a category, I was never reaching for rye. Dad's Hat was an outlier. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, I, I, I'd reach for that. One of the very first rides that I ever had was like, that's special. That's good. That's that's. It is. This is closer to a Monongahela, Pennsylvania, or Northeastern rye than it is yeah. to any other rye I've ever had. The difference is this one finishes round and sweet when you taste it. Yeah. And the Journeyman finishes herbal and dry. Yeah. That's true. Yeah? Yeah, Dad's Hat definitely sweeter. This is more herbal. Yeah, it's dry. good though. And there's enough sweetness to to make it just um, re- this, is the, this is what the wheat is bringing. I'm like guessing a yeah. layer of soft sweetness. Now go ahead and go back to the bourbon just out of pure curiosity. Cherry and oak on the nose. Yeah, dominant. Wow. Now it's even prettier. Yeah. It's candied. Coming off the heels, it's like a candy cherry. Dude, that bourbon is magnificent. Yeah, yeah. I uh, super son good. Of a bitch. It's super good. Okay. Now we're gonna do one, and I'm just gonna pour one glass instead of two. Let me sip first. That's yeah, fine. There, there, there have been some incidents recently, but this is a flavored whiskey, right. and that's why I'm only gonna pour one glass. Oh, okay. But it's their journeyman. Uh, they call it the pit spitter. Pit spitter. So is cherry this cherry flavored, flavored whiskey? Okay. Now they really go. do use a whiskey in this. This yeah. is um, I, everything that's happening right now is leading me to. There, there's little signals that are going out, right? Mm-hmm. Everything Ooh, from whoa, wow, hold on, that's like a cordial. Here it is. That's so there, they, there's there's signals going out, right? Everything from the the prominence of wheat, mm-hmm. some soft sweetness in these various mash bills, but but you got like uh, proofs that are hitting the floor. Mm-hmm. I think they're trying to thread the needle between having interesting whiskeys, right? But not just so simple and so sweet. We're making something for the broadest mass market possible. They're trying to be accessible. They still want to be accessible. Right. This will be making a lot of assumptions no, I, based on what I'm seeing in these bottles. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This. Okay, hang on. That's Last Feather Rye. No, it's not. They start with the rye. And then they put in. And then they, for 14 days, they soak macerated Mon- Michigan Montgomery cherries into it. So it's not candied cherries. It's actual cherries. You want to know the crazy thing? It's actual cherries mixed into rye whiskey. What is it? You look at this and you think you're going to get punched in the nose with the cherry. Yeah. It's definitely present. Okay. But it's not as violently cherry as you would be led to believe with that color. This is batch two, by the way. Now, I'm going back a second time and I'm getting punched in the nose. (laughs) Very cherry on the nose. Again, third time, it builds. Oh, the cherry builds. Okay, let me see if I have that experience. Smells like rye with a hint of cherry. There you go. All right. Yeah, you're right. The cherry's climbing. <laughs> what is that? How is that possible? I don't know. And you don't acclimate to it. You get more sensitive to it. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> it just grows. Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. I told you you could sit first. That's cherry juice, man. Is it? Yep. There's no rye to speak of. Rye is out the window. Oh yeah. That's actually really smooth cherry juice. It really is. I like. I like cherries. Can you imagine that in a cocktail? I mean, just drinking this neat. This is something that the alcohol, what is the proof on this? The alcohol 35. Is, yeah, the alcohol is pretty Slow. invisible. But uh Okay, I, need I don't water. know. This Do is the kind water? of thing where you can get in trouble with drink some just water, throwing it back, the alcohol not registering because that just cherry. That cherry, that dark, um, dark, juicy cherry, ripe character. I'm not good at reviewing flavored whiskeys, but I will tell you this. It doesn't f- taste like something got flavored. No, it's natural. It tastes like cherries. Natural. Like yeah. actual cherries. Definitely natural. It's mm. not fireball. Cinnamon bullshit. All right, I'm going Damn. back to the bourbon. Yep, punched in the mouth with cherries. All right. To the bourbon, huh? Was that the journeyman line? The cherry in the bourbon is still there. I thought it would have been buried after the cherry whiskey. Mm-hmm. No. It clings. It clings. This gets, the bourbon gets sweeter and sweeter. In terms of oiliness, mm-hmm. I think it's the cherry, then the bourbon, and then the rye. And the rye's not oily. Yeah. It's these bright, I agree. herbal light flavors. That's yeah. cool. Damn good lineup. <sighs> Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may I fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal your liver side. And if you drink, may you drink with us.